downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit. Local 4 News at 5 starts now. It is faster, easier to do, and it's just been cleared by the FDA. What you need to know about antigen testing for the coronavirus, it does come, though, with a pretty big trade-off. And decision delayed. The Capitol Commission was expected to vote on banning guns in the State House, but instead, they voted to do something different. And then there are the numbers. In the past 24 hours, 33 more Michiganders have died, and 414 more people have tested positive for the virus. But we begin tonight with the battle over banning guns inside the State House. The Capitol Commission, a group normally responsible for the condition of the Michigan Capitol building, has been told they have the authority to make that decision. And they met today, getting input from the Attorney General and from the Senate Majority Leader Rod Maloney, uh, live with more on this. Rod, this is a group that usually does not get a whole lot of attention. This is not in their wheelhouse, Devin. Let's be clear about this. Now, this is highly controversial, and making it more so and more interesting is that the Attorney General today ruled that they have the ability to make this determination, which usually carries with it the force of law until a judge were to decide otherwise. In the meantime, well, the uh, the, the Senate Majority Leader said, hey, well, wait a minute here. Let's work with the state police and, and the, uh, the sergeants at arms and so forth to see if we can come up with a policy that will work in this thing. And in the meantime, the commission's going, well, uh, we can't make a decision today. The images of the militia members who carried rifles to a protest, both outside and inside the Capitol, caused considerable consternation among legislators and others a week and a half ago. The obscure commission's meeting today, held on Zoom, caught so much attention, it maxed out its membership quickly. And one member, Bill Candler, had to call into the meeting on the phone because he couldn't get in. Commission attorney Amy Shaw reiterated her position. The Michigan Capital Commission is in charge of restoration woodwork, historic paintings, vintage chandeliers, polishing marble floors, planting flowers, and docent tours. The Capital Commission does not set public policy. The legislature does. Member Margaret O'Brien made a motion to study the issue. For me to make a final decision today, would not be doing the duty of which I'm obligated to do. And so the motion is not intended to sidestep the issue, but rather to do it in a thorough manner. And member Bill Candler said he wants the politics removed from the issue. And I think if we have the authority to act, we have the duty to act. But hopefully uh, as a committee, we, we, we can work this through as this mission always has, as a purely you know, objective review of what the, the law is. In the end, they set up a five-member commission to study but move on this issue quickly. Now, one of the things that happens in a Zoom meeting is you can put in uh, comments in a chat area. Well, apparently the comments got threatening against some of the commission members, uh, threatening even against the governor at, uh, apparently at some point, which gave the members pause, and at that point, they adjourned. Reporting live, Rod Maloney, Buckle 4. All right, Rod, and speaking of the governor, let's get to her now answering the most frequently asked questions she says she's been getting in her office from Michiganders. She answered those questions during a news conference this afternoon, and she also had plenty to say about threats that she's getting over her executive orders. Priya Mann is following that part of the story for us tonight. Priya. And the governor started by saying that she's concerned for the safety of protesters, saying they're congregating together and they're not wearing masks. But she said these demonstrations will not influence her executive orders. The governor is not backing down from her executive orders, even as the vitriol has increased. The violent, racist, extreme rhetoric that has already been connected to Thursday's rally, and that was reported in the Metro Times today, I think is... Um, concerning isn't a strong enough word. Governor Whitmer also called out legislators in Lansing. This could be avoided if Republican leadership in the legislature would step up and denounce that kind of activity. Last week, Senate Majority Leader Mike Shirky did call out armed protesters. With frustration at stay home orders mounting, the governor says her administration's policies are working to flatten the curve. We've made these sacrifices. Let's not make them in vain. Let's everyone continue to do their part so that we can move on to the next phase. She also answered questions for Michiganders. One of them was whether there was enough money in the unemployment fund. With a 4.5, 4 I'm sorry, $4.6 billion in the trust fund prior to this pandemic, we had the third highest trust fund balance in the nation. 
also third highest in terms of solvency. So for comparison, at, time, um, at this time during the Great Recession, there was less than $40 million in that trust fund. So we're in a much stronger position to help people. And with more than a million unemployed, the state also revealed plans to hire a thousand contact tracers. Right now there's about a hundred. They said they could hire more than a thousand if need be. Another tool to combat the virus as the state slowly begins to reopen. Reporting live, I'm Priya Mann, Local 4. Okay, Priya. And as, at his daily briefing today, Mayor Duggan revealed another city employee has died from coronavirus. Antoinette Bell uh, worked for three years in the immunization clinic as a community advocate for the Detroit Health Department. Well, this past weekend, the city completed its testing of all residents and workers at nursing homes. They did that ahead of schedule. Well, now the focus moves toward senior living apartments. And Mayor Duggan says the city is a few weeks from moving from phase three to phase four in Governor Whitmer's six phase reopening plan. So if you've got a shoe store, if you've got a clothing store, if you've got an art store, if you've got a bookstore, you've got the kind of business that people can come in and go back out, those are the kinds of businesses that will open in phase four. City of Detroit plans to bring back 150 to 200 workers as well over the next week. A short time ago, President Trump updated the testing situation in the United States. He also praised the approval of a new type of test for COVID-19. On Friday, the FDA authorized coronavirus antigen test, and alternative testing technology that can be much more readily manufactured. Quidel Corporation, which makes this newly authorized point-of-care test, estimates that it will be able to manufacture 150,000 tests per day, immediately increasing to 300,000 tests per day within just a few weeks. The delay in getting test results, the lack of tests in many states, has of course been a key point of frustration. But could this new type of test help alleviate some of those issues? Dr. Frank McGeorge is here to explain exactly what is an antigen and how it could help. This is a step forward in terms of rapid testing. You can get the results in about 15 minutes, and the antigen tests are significantly easier to manufacture, making it more feasible to produce enough to be able to test significantly more people. But the speed and simplicity do come with a trade-off in terms of accuracy. The FDA issued an emergency use authorization for the new antigen test created by Quidel. The test still uses a swab to collect the sample. So what makes it so different? Well, all of the previous tests for active COVID-19 infections are what we call PCR tests. That means they're looking for genetic material from the coronavirus and multiplying that material until there's enough to detect it. The antigen test is looking for something different pieces of surface protein from the virus, usually the spikes, that are big enough to detect without multiplying them. Last month on Meet the Press, Dr. Deborah Burks called for this type of testing breakthrough. We have to be able to detect antigen rather than constantly trying to detect the actual live virus or the viral particles itself. There is a downside to antigen tests. They have a higher rate of false negatives. That means if you test positive, you can be confident that's an accurate result. But if you test negative, there's a lower degree of certainty, and your doctor may want to confirm that result with a PCR test, especially if you are showing symptoms. Remember, there is no perfect test, and that's why we need other measures like masks, social distancing, and hand washing, too. Now, this is the first antigen test to be authorized, but it won't be the last. The FDA says it expects antigen tests to play a critical role moving forward. Back to you. All right, Frank, the state of coronavirus testing is the focus of the nation's capital today as well, as three of the nation's top health experts are now in quarantine after being exposed to someone with the virus. With cases appearing inside the West Wing, the White House is upping security safety measures and seeking to reassure a country that's trying to get back to work. Alice Barr in Washington with the latest. Alice. Devin, testing is done daily inside the White House and now stepping up even more. But the emergence of the virus there raises questions for workplaces across the country that won't have nearly the same resources. More than 80,000 Americans have now died from coronavirus as President Trump turns his focus to reopening the economy, 
tweeting today coronavirus numbers are going down almost everywhere. That upbeat prognosis at odds with the view from inside the White House gates after Vice President Pence's press secretary, one of President Trump's personal valets, and several Secret Service members have all tested positive for the virus. Three top health officials on the coronavirus task force now having to self-quarantine. It is scary to go to work. I think that I'd be a lot safer if I was sitting at home than I would be going to the West Wing, but, you know, it's a time when people have to step up and serve their country. The White House is stepping up safety measures, including mandatory masks for some resident staff and increased testing and temperature checks with daily testing for senior staffers. Far more rigorous steps than in workplaces reopening across the country. And yet the virus is inside the White House. They're not safe. Where is safe? Several senior staffers seen entering the White House today without wearing masks, though Task Force Coordinator Dr. Deborah Burks did. The three self-quarantined officials, Dr. Anthony Fauci, the CDC director, and the FDA commissioner, all expected to appear by video conference tomorrow for a hearing on returning to work and school. It comes as former President Barack Obama gave a rare rebuke of the Trump administration's pandemic response during a private call with the Obama Alumni Association, the audio obtained by Yahoo News. It would have been bad even with the best of governments. It has been an absolute chaotic disaster. President Trump lashing out at the former president today on Twitter. In hardest-hit New York, Governor Andrew Cuomo announced today that state would begin a limited reopening this Friday after new hospitalizations fell to the same level as when the crisis first started two months ago. In Washington, Alice Barr, Local 4. All right, thanks, Alice. We are off and running here on a Monday. Here's Ben. Kevin Devin, for the second out of three days, we're looking at record lows, but everything is coming up roses after that. We'll look at a much more May-like forecast next. All right, Ben, also the call for answers grows in Georgia. New tonight, Georgia's Attorney General putting out the call for help in the murder investigation of Ahmaud Arbery. Victor. I'm Victor Williams, and landlords may be suffering from this pandemic, but one thing they cannot do at this time is give any type of eviction out. I'll have that story and those details coming right up.